<clears throat> okay, so I've covered uh, Epcot, uh, Animal Kingdom. So now we're going to go to one of the big ones. This, of course, was Hollywood Studios. So, of course, had to go through the process of building a lightsaber. Uh, I did that with my daughter, so with my seven-year-old. And I will safely say it is an amazing experience. The blade itself actually is really well done. So, activator switch. Uh, I don't know how well it's going to show up. I actually, well, now I chose the uh, the nature side, and when we got in there, uh, the way it was set up, my daughter had to be like off to the corner from me. So what I did was, I chose uh, the style. Uh, she chose the handle construction. So when you build it, here is one section covers the kyber crystal. Had a hard time getting that in because, I mean, you know, if you're a fan of Star Wars, this is a life-changing moment to build a lightsaber. I had a hard time getting the crystal to, to fit in perfectly. And, of course, you can buy extra crystals. Had to get a, a clear one. Now, of course, my daughter's like, well, I built this, so I should get it. I'm like, no. Daddy paid for it, and you helped me choose the pieces. So, of course, she ended up choosing all the pieces that lined up. And then with the, the Rancor tooth for it, and even the guy who hosted the shop was like, that's good. Then if you're underwater and your blade doesn't work, you still have a weapon. And I went, or you can scratch your back. She kind of got a, a kick out of it. Uh, nice, loud blade is, is in there pretty well. Uh, quick TSA tip. Um... Going through MCO, which of course is the Orlando airport, they're kind of used to these. I mean, <clears throat> we had, I detached the blade because I was unsure if this whole unit, you know, the, the hilt all the way up to the end of the blade would fit in an overhead compartment. Uh, for the Southwest flight that we were on, I had this part detached and inside my uh, carry-on. This was in the bag by itself. <clears throat> and there was probably enough room that I probably could have left the whole thing inside just the, the regular standard bag. Um, now, of course, this was during March 2021. So, of course, in the time of COVID. <clears throat> um, since I had my wife carrying the, the blade because I had backpacks on and stuff. Um, the first order troopers did go, I will assume you're a collector. As, as they, they kind of, you know, gave her a hard time grabbing a lightsaber. Speaking of the First Order, <clears throat> Rise of the Resistance, very fun. Um, so, of course, I was there with a, a larger hat on, and the mask that I was wearing for that day was what was called Shiny Bounty Hunter, functionally a Mandalorian mask. So, Rise of the Resistance, you know, when you get captured, of course, me being 6'3", the guy's walking up to me, where was your transport headed? And I just stared at him. Like, I didn't say anything. So, I'm thinking... Uh, as far as the stick, you know, they're going to kind of like go, oh, we're going to, like, you know. And then later, my, my daughter, who's seven, said that I should have spoken like Chewbacca to him. Like, where are you headed? <laughs> so you should have done that. But didn't. Uh, so, again, with this, we did a rope drop. Uh, supposed to open at 9. We got there at 8.30. Went straight to Star Wars. Did not get the stroller for my daughter. Went straight to Star Wars. Got on the Millennium Falcon by about 9. Didn't do very well because, you know, it's three generations. So my parents had no idea what to do. And I'm like, hit the buttons. Hit the flashing buttons. My daughter pretty much had her head down and was holding on to the bars because it was a sensory overload for her. Um, my, my wife was pilot, so she's like, okay, well, what does what? I'm like, okay, get control the forward, we go down, control the back, we go up, and I'm doing side to side. Um, I think we did like 11,340 credits afterwards, but I didn't have my, uh, my phone turned on to the play, so I didn't get the credits for it, which kind of sucked. <clears throat> now, of course, to go along with that, uh, I had, of course, to build the droid. Now, my wife and I built the droid together. So, daughter went with one, wife with the other. So, of course, we went with an R2 unit. Uh, I don't know how this is going to show up. This is actually 
Uh, we have the purple and silver, and the body's black and white. I'm not taking it out because this thing is comfort molded at the bottom. So it's a pain to get in and out. Uh, the, the nice thing is controller. It's got a controller pocket. Super easy to work. You know, head, side to side, forward, backwards, making noises. Uh, I'm not going to turn it on because you have to turn it on here. Take the whole unit out uh, because the, the on and off switch is down by the feet, which is nice. I have heard with the, uh, the BB units, you actually had to pretty much take apart the center dome to get to it. And I'm like, no. So what was this like going through TSA? Again, going through MCO, I actually had this in the backpack in carry-on luggage and didn't get stopped. TSA in some areas view that as a toy and less of electronics, which was nice. So Hollywood Studios overall, we just did Star Wars. I mean, it, it was the place where we had other things I would like to have done, but we just did Star Wars. That was our main focus. I mean, in, in the course of, from when we got there until about 12.30, I will run you through what we did. We got there, flew the Millennium Falcon at 9.30. Uh, thanks to Travel Smiths, I was able to have them, that's the people I used to, to do the trip, they were able actually to secure me a time to build a lightsaber and to build the droid, which was awesome. I mean, the lightsaber experience alone. I mean, if you watch the videos of it, no. Did, no, it did not do it justice. I probably think Hanson's a hard time trying to get the Kyber Crystal in because I'm, I'm shaking. And you're trying to push your crystal. There's a little uh, platform at the top that goes in and the bottom part stays stable. But your crystal has to lay in a specific spot in order for the, the you know, light to kick out all that. Had a hard time with that. I actually had to have the person who was you know helping everybody like I, I can't just get it to, to click and she's like okay like it was nothing everything else was was easy uh food so yes we did blade and falcon uh, built a lightsaber built a droid i uh, did some of the work on the app i will say learn the app so much fun you know like intercepting transmissions and all that uh, i also did do the audible book uh black spire outpost which lets you know why Kylo Ren is there. Def definitely worth listening to. Uh, I also had the Kindle uh, book version of A Traveler's Guide to Batu, which is nice because it gives the, the area a real nice lived-in feel to it. Uh, we did do the milk stand. Ironically, we were the first people to get milk, but it was mobile order only. So I had to stand there, go, well, can I just place an order? They go, no, mobile only. Okay. So I stood there, placed the mobile order for... The exact same time I was standing there, placed the order, it went through, and then I walked up and we had both the blue and the green. Uh, blue is fruit-based, green is floral-based. Uh, they're both vegan milks, so there's no there's no bantha in this year. Okay. Uh, I, I will say I liked both of them, but I'm okay with both kind of like a, like a fruitier flavor in the blue one, which almost everyone else really enjoyed, and the floral notes of a green one. I was like, you know, this isn't bad. It's different. Uh, we did not eat at Ronto Roasters. We did get to look at it, so I was like, you know, there's the smelting droid, there's the, the, the pod racer engine, which says the, the heating of it. And so we did Docking Base 7, because it had a much wider array, much wider array of food choices. <clears throat> so, I mean, my folks did, you know, uh, did some salads with chicken, which they really enjoyed. Uh, my daughter did the Andorian Tip Yip, which is a, a fried chicken breast, and she really, really enjoyed that. I mean, all the food was really good. I mean, nothing that was there really made me go, eh, expensive, yes. Now, I did get the Moof Juice, and I got, of course, from the Souvenir Cup, which, bam, lights up, you know how it shows up, there is a critter in there, see the critter, look at that critter. Uh, Moof Juice, again, this is one of their combinations of, here's a bunch of tropical fruits blended together. This one also has the benefit of chipotle pineapple added to it, which I, I will say that was my favorite beverage next to like the blood orange aqua fresca that we had at Epcot. But I mean, you know, it was just, we did Star Wars. We didn't get to go to the marketplace because there was a line for that. And then of course, we're like, we're trying to find a baby Yoda. My daughter was like, I want a baby Yoda. I'm getting a baby Yoda. Where's my baby Yoda? So we actually had to go to uh, the Tatooine Traders, which 
It's like, here's Batu on the outside near where uh, Star Tours is. That's where they have another spot to do some of your uh, Star Wars shopping. Which, of course, if you do Star Tours and you come out, you come out through Tatooine Traders. Disney's very good at that. It's like, oh, how was the ride? The ride was awesome. Cool. Exit through a gift shop. Buy something from the ride. The mouse needs your money. 35% facet. <clears throat> so we walked through Toy Story Land twice, kind of just to get our bearings. Because we did some Star Wars stuff. We ran, got the stroller, came back, did more Star Wars stuff. Didn't get to go in the marketplace because there was a line for it. And, you know, by the time about 1 o'clock hit, we ended up hitting one of the relaxation stations, which ended up being at the Indiana Jones area, which was nice. So just... Oh, and just take, take a load off, just relax. We did check, and I was like, hmm, there was some bad weather coming in. So, okay, fine. It's like, do you guys want to do the Frozen sing-along? I don't know if it's Frozen, but she was like, no, I'm done. I'm just done. It was a warmer day. It's like, well, there's a car, you know, Mickey's Runaway Railroad. 50-minute wait. They were like, the last two things really on the list. Well, three things. One, a Wookiee cookie, which we didn't do because we had had all we had all bunch of other snacks and we were just you know, full. Uh, we did eat a Rice Krispie treat that was Baby Yoda's head, so a Grogu Rice Krispie treat, which was actually pretty good. Yeah, Rice Krispie treat makes sense, you know, they're easy to make. We just you know added sugar to it because that's what Rice Krispie treat needs. It needs you know more sugar and fat, and it was pretty good. And you know, it was just the Batu area just got so crowded i i know that there were some spots to do the photos but i mean there's just there's just wall to wall people and rises was fun i mean really intense ride glad i was able to get onto it now if you want to know how you get onto that here's what you do you wake up at 6 45 if you're on property because if you're on property you get a 7 a.m if you're not on property it's like resorts and all that you then kind of have the 1 p.m. So what you do is, at about 6.45, you wake up. <clears throat> you do a restart of your phone. You make sure you are off of the Disney Wi-Fi. Do this on mobile. And then you hop and you try to get in the virtual queue. So we got on the virtual queue for like an 11 o'clock. Cool. Five of us, 11 o'clock. Sweet, let's do it. Ended up being about 11, 12 when we ended up getting the, like, oh, come back for your boarding party. We had an 11.30 a lunch reservation. And I was like, well, I go, I'm like, well, I've got 11.30 for lunch. What do you recommend? And the guy was like, oh, yeah, you know, if you're at 11.15, you can come back at around 12.15. He's like, or, he's like, or, you know, if you go and you get lunch and you come back and it's, you know, like 12.30, he was like, just let us know, we'll get you back in line, no problem. So, I mean, we just focused on Star Wars. Uh, now the railway railroad looked awesome, but again, it was one of those things where it was like, well, you know, had we not just focused entirely on Star Wars stuff, didn't do as much with uh, the data pad and hacking and all that. And most of it was probably because, you know, there's three generations and if I'm the person staring at my phone, making lights turn off and on and things beep, you know, it's like, well, what are we going to do now? Again, at like 930, we were making reservations for 1130 for food. So that's just how, how crazy it kind of gets. And mobile ordering makes it so much easier. So Hollywood Studios, lots of fun. Actually, as we were uh, in the vehicle going back to Coronado Springs, just the sky opened up. And someone had to page Noah. Because, I mean, it was just a massive torrential downpour for about 20 minutes. And then once that was done, you know, we got back to the rooms and we were like, oh. Everyone was kind of beat. You know, day before we did uh, Animal Kingdom. And of course, the Animal Kingdom, we you know, we were down at seven o'clock in the morning, which is six o'clock our time. So you know, we did a lot of early days to do this, but you know, this is one of those times where finding somebody to do the booking for you was fantastic. I mean, I didn't have to worry about trying to get anything scheduled. I had someone else to schedule it for me, and you know, they got the the times that I wanted to do. Uh, droid building. Again, you get to pay, take someone with you. You even have an observation deck, too, so you can watch some people do it. 
with that, you know, they're kind of like, which one do you want? Do you want an R series or a B series? I, I will say for the R series, I like how they had, you know, if you want the R two D two style, if you want like the R four style, and they had a third style, and I was like, wow, a lot of different styles here. I do wish they had greens, like green colors. I mean, it kind of makes sense you don't have certain colors because it might just look weird. But without it being, you know, black, white, red, blue, purple, it's like, eh. Like yellows and orange would look really cool too. But not that much in the way of color options. Now they did say if you had the ability to choose like every style of option, like when you grab legs for an R2, you get for an R series, you get both legs. So you're not like two different colored legs. Okay. Probably makes sense because it makes it easier. So you're not grabbing two legs going, okay, we have a right and a left. We're gonna have two lefts. You know, they give you an actual drill, you know, to get it to go in. Uh, my bit was kind of kind of weird. You can tell that people hadn't been pushing quite well, and the beard was built. The bit was kind of worn a little bit, so it made getting some parts a little bit harder to do. But super cool. And when you're walking around and it's beeping, it's just awesome. So, yes, I did walk around with it like this. You know, window open, so it's looking all over the place. And the amount of guys who look at you walking with like your uh, droid Bjorn and they kind of give you a little like droid. now there was of course a guy who made me feel entirely out of place uh, dressed like Obi-Wan Kenobi in prequel style he had two hilts strapped to him two spare blades like he was ready to pop it in and you know like fight the first order and he had, um, on Etsy, you can find these really nice looking, almost like a, like net styles. And you use that to carry your droid. So he had his droid like in the net style with the two blades dressed like he was, you know, ready to be like, oh, there's Kylo Ren. You know, like he, he was ready to throw down the first order. So, I mean, that place was awesome. When it was done, I was like, man. As we're already in the process of kind of planning our next trip, you know, once COVID is done and I have time to financially recover from the trip, it's like, okay. We did two and a half days for Magic Kingdom, one day Epcot, uh, one day Animal, and one day Hollywood. Like, I'd probably be doing one and a half days of Hollywood. Two days Magic Kingdom because there's just there's just so much to do there, and then probably one day Epcot because by that time you'll have uh, Ratatouille and uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, and then probably still one day of Animal Kingdom to be kind of like more of a chill day, but you know tremendous amount of fun, man. Once you walk into Batu, but then again I spent you know several hours researching and reading the books and all that, and again definitely go with you know an agent to help you book some stuff. Again I went with a Travel Smith. Just tremendous, tremendous amount of fun.